Hello everybody, my name is Emil. If you guys don't know me, I am the owner of CTGP Records along with ZR aka Colin. Every competitive game is based on a rule set. So is Mario Kart Wii. And through the years, the community decided to create rules for themselves, such as those on the world record site and the players page. Maintaining balance is extremely necessary, especially when playing a game like Mario Kart Wii. The latest rule was heavily discussed and implemented two weeks ago. Because of a divided opinion, and many people not really understanding the rule itself, CTGP Records has decided to upload an explanation video for you guys. In this video, I'm going to concentrate on pause buffering. First off, I'm going to explain what pause buffering is and why it's banned. And secondly, I'll explain what the competitive scene is about and why rules are so important. Let's begin. Pause buffering is distinguishable from home buffering. In Mario Kart Wii and in other games, it's possible to abuse the pause button in order to get a better run. But how does this look and how does this work? Basically, by pausing and re-entering the game, your input range will be reduced. This means you're able to time chain wheelies, fast stick movements, alignments, and other strats that need timing. Here are two examples done by Brett and Cole that either make use of pause for better timing or for better stick movements. Cole, who uses a GameCube controller, describes it with the following. You can time a chain really input and press start. I believe the pause should be one frame after the wheelie input. Then press start again to unpause and buffer in another wheelie input. In general, the chain wheelie works like this. The wheelie breaks and you just press the D-pad up again in order to stay in a wheelie. The mechanics behind this are simple. Without pausing, you either time the chain by pressing the D-pad once, twice, or simply spam it and hope you hit on the right frame, which is where the term luck wheelie comes from. Cole explains it with so-called frame gaps. Normally, when you push the D-pad twice, you're not going to be fast enough to hit it for two consecutive frames. That's two frames in a row in a 60 FPS game. Now the frame gap for double taps is usually about two to three frames. By abusing the pause button, you can reduce this frame gap to only one frame. With a one frame gap, your chances are better than with a two frame gap, obviously. Cole summarized both scenarios like this. Here is how people normally chain. Note that this applies to the usual way of chaining. Now we are three frames before the exact frame, and if you start to double tap now, you will get a chain because of your second D-pad input that needs two frames to hit the exact frame for a chain. If you start to press the D-pad one frame later, or two frames early, you get a half chain because of the two frame gap, and so on. By abusing the pause button, you are able to reduce the frame gap. The inputs will look like this. D-pad up and press start at the same time. Then, press start and D-pad up again at the same time. The D-pad input will be registered directly and reduces the frame gap to 1. You can see the chances of getting a chain are way higher. It looks harmless, but if you can master this technique, you can time your chains way better. And as Cole said, he only needed like 30 minutes to get into this, which is extremely abusable in time trials. This is also possible on Peach Gardens. Brett used it on this exact turn in order to get a bounce. With automatic, you have to change directions while in a drift by moving the stick from side to side. But that's not easy to do because we are sometimes not fast enough. By abusing the pause buffer technique, you can make the stick movements frame perfect. As shown in the video, 
Brett does this to get this necessary bounce that saves a lot of time. To sum it up, you are able to abuse this and get better at frame perfect strats that need timing. But what does this actually mean? Why is it banned? To approach this, we need to understand competition and why rules are so important. We also need to know what time trials actually are and why people need to establish rules. When Mario Kart Wii came out in 2008, there was the so-called MKW channel with implemented competition for time trials. People started to fight for top 10 spots because of official Nintendo charts. Lots of people saw these records and started to create fan base charts on several websites. The only problem was that Nintendo did not care about the charts. Cheaters infected the charts and they were not accurate anymore. Fans created world record history sites that kept track of world records. The problem about the Nintendo charts was that there were no indicated rules or similar instructions for submitting a time to the Nintendo Top 10s. The only real rule that existed was that the fastest times were added and displayed on the charts, just as the game was programmed to do so. When glitches had their debut, the charts changed and the no glitch times vanished. The already established world records and top 10s were surpassed by glitch times and people started to discuss if these kinds of glitches should be removed or not. The final conclusion was to create separate categories to keep the competition and the interest in no glitch world records alive. There were people who wanted to compete in glitch categories and people who wanted to compete in no glitch categories. The principle was that the fastest time on a track is the world record and glitches were in fact a part of the game. Many years passed and more and more rules were added and changed. Hackers started to create cheat codes that were obviously banned, but people started to use them in order to infect the charts and destroy the competition. Controller modifications, input changes, rapid fire, slow motion, and other cheat codes were known. Game modifications like texture hacks and custom music were used by many people. The community decided later on that these kind of hacks and modifications should not be used in time trials since they affect the way of playing the game and can be abused for advantages. These players kind of disagree to this point because simple texture hacks do not affect the gameplay itself unless the modifications are so heavy then you can abuse them for visual cues and other things. The truth is that many people who agreed on banning these kind of stuff do not agree because of the advantages you have. No, many people think that the competition should be equal for everyone. The term Vanilla MKW describes the regular game without any modifications. Vanilla time trials are based on no modifications or similar tools that are not regularly added to the game. So what does this actually mean? As said earlier, the competition should be equal for everyone. Everything that is not vanilla time trial is not acceptable since the normal game does not contain such things. In the end, the rule was established and you were forced to TT without any gameplay modifications. But why is CTGP allowed then? We'll make a separate video about CTGP and why every world record should be played through CTGP today. Let's compare this all to pause buffering, which was implemented recently. The rule says that you are not able to use it in time trials. The obvious questions now are, why is it banned when it's vanilla MKW? Why are glitches not banned then? Why aren't there any categories for it? We can answer all the questions step by step. Firstly, why is it banned when it is vanilla MKW? Now from the Mario Kart 64 players page, I quote, There is a bug in the game where you can save seconds on your flap times by leaving your Nintendo 64 running for days before attempting to flap. No one would play competitive Mario Kart 64 flaps if this was allowed as it would be completely unenjoyable to do attempts. So it is banned for both non-shortcut and shortcut categories and no one competes in a separate category for these times either. Now imagine this kind of thing in Mario Kart Wii. Yes, it would be vanilla, but just considered as a glitch. 
the timer slows down, and your records will be faster in the end of the day. Would you accept this as a legal way to accomplish records? Compared to time trials driven in real time, it would be unfair and would destroy the competitive scene. Not everything that is implemented in the game is also a must have. It is on you if you want to accept these kinds of glitches, but many people don't. Glitches are allowed because of the competitive enthusiasm. It also does not destroy the way of playing the game. You just do something else while driving in real time. In fact, glitches add another aspect to the game entirely which a certain audience will be bound to enjoy. Now the pause buffering technique is not a big threat to this point, but definitely changes the way of playing the game. Theoretically, you can pause buffer everything. It's like slowing the game down and no real time driving anymore. Almost like a human tool assisted speedrun, but not quite to that extent. That leads to another point that provides the rule in being implemented. What are real time trials? What makes a time trial a time trial? And is the ban too harsh? Well, in time trials, you drive from start to finish. What you drive on, what your strategies are, or how you play the track is all on what you decide to do. There are enough ways to play a track, and there are separate categories for some tracks. But the competitive scene and world records are based on real-time driving. Pause buffering could take the spirit of TTing and make it less impressive since the skill for doing so would be really small. The way we time trial hasn't changed in almost 11 years of playing this game. The only things that changed were how we drive in real time and how we drive the track. But what makes a time trial so special? Why do people love it? Because it's skillful. You need timing, consistency, input speed, reaction time, muscle memory, and also the creativity for new ideas for strategies that change the metagame to get better records. In other sports, you're not allowed to pause your action and the timer won't stop when you have to tie your shoe while running the 100 meter in a competition. If so, what would be the point of the sport? Of course, you can do this, but people won't be impressed because it's not the way how people should run competitively. Now then, Brett's recent Peach Gardens world record used this technique before the community decided to ban it, and Brett himself insisted on removing them. He fully agreed because the way that he played time trials changed, and it didn't feel right for him. Obviously his times were strong indeed, they were legit and increased the track standards a lot. And he can obviously do this by not using the pause buffering technique, it's just a lot harder. Also, he just used this technique to small extent, but he wants to set an example, showing that this is not the right way of playing this game. I hope you guys understand why this is a thing and why it's banned on MarioKartWorldRecords.com. You're still able to use this and create categories. CTGP will save the ghosts, of course, but it also does show if you paused in your runs or not, thanks to the programming that Mr. Bean and Chatters have set for ghosts. You're also able to pause normally in a run. Not only because you need to restart the TT or change the course, sometimes you have to pause it because of an interruption. Only the records that are done with pause buffering and abusing this technique will be declined. I hope you guys understand that this rule won't change. Just stay competitive and be happy that people still care about this game almost 11 years after its release in America and worldwide. It could have been dead if we didn't do anything about the cheaters and complications that came around in all the years of this game. But make sure you guys don't spread negativity in the comments. If you do want to talk about it, feel free to do so, but stay positive and objective and maintain a proper opinion. It's not better when you stick to insults. That's only going to make yourself look like a fool. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this explanation. Look forward to more world record uploads on CTGP records from all of us here in the recording group. I hope you guys all have a nice day. I'll see you guys later.